Question on it. I would love to see starting all over on Celeste in, in this matchup. Yeah, and you mentioned the draft. I think we, we should start to lean towards talking about that now as well. Because, I mean, Flash X, we regularly announce him as kind of one of these uh, gurus of the draft, if you will. His, his game knowledge is exceptional. What are we expecting to come out here? Well, I mean, again, last season, it was always the Flash X is the draft master. But then it, during the season, they added... Vonsi and Best Chuck into some of the more decision making. Like they they have a much stronger voice in the draft now. And so, you know, Flash X actually sent us a message last season saying, "Look, I don't want to take all the credit because I can't." But they both of these teams very much know how they want to start the draft. This is going wow. super fast. Yeah, I wanted to comment because I knew TSM's going to ban Glaive. They banned actually Grumpjaw yesterday, and Glaive is a great ban because Starting Over has played a lot of lane Glaive, and that's what's carried him to beat Nova yesterday. So the Grumpjaw ban is also very smart because you don't want to give a Grumpjaw Lyra combination. Nation. First Breaking Baron um, is a very good pick because TSM has done that yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and Lyra coming out from Hammers is a very comfort pick for um, Afro or Poli, depending on who's playing. I think Afro is playing. Um, so let's see. I think they'll probably go with the Vox here, most likely, um, on the side of Hammers. Or even go with the Celeste if they want to be a little risky. So let's see what Starting is going to decide to pick up here. Or so they can go with a jungler and take Koshka, honestly. Talk to me a little bit about this Rhyme Band, because that's definitely, it, without context, that's definitely coming out of left field. Yeah, Rhyme Band is probably because TSM wants to play a specific character that's really good into... Um, uh, in, I mean, the Rhyme Band is probably because they don't want Von C on the Rhyme. Um, because of potential pick that they have on the B side that they want to play into Baron, that Rhyme counters complete, like Taka. Rhyme is actually good into Taka if you can root okay. him and put him into place. Okay, no worries. Well, TSM now going to be looking for their counter picks, their final two picks. What's a good composition that can run with the Baron here? Yeah, they can go with Batiste. Um, they can also pick Kashka, but Batiste is really good with this composition along with like Finn, for example, is going to be really strong. That's a very strong front line for Baron to do damage from the back line. Any thoughts, Bacon? I mean, with the Batiste coming through, that's, again, going to heavily limit what Hammers can now pick up. And, again, a lot of the things that can deal with the Baron are the very mobile heroes like you know, the Taka, like uh, a Kashka, or things of that nature. And Batiste just takes those out of the equation. So uh, it's going to be very difficult, I think, for Hammers to find something that yeah. will be able to contest this Baron. And Lance also very good at those yeah. kind of assassins that want to dive into the back. Yeah, and I think Blackfeather makes the most sense here on Hammer's part. A CP Blackfeather, because he is decent into Batiste, he outranges Batiste, and actually can poke a Baron, and he can ult out of the Ordain and dodge Lance Roots mm -hmm. and stuff. So I think if they want to be smart here, they would probably pick the, uh, the CP Blackfeather here. But they can also do Koshka, but Koshka is going to be countered completely by Baptiste. But they actually go with Samu and say, which is uh, kind of risky because with Baptiste locked on and Lance and Baron, they can blow up the Samuel like right away. Yeah, well, we've also seen Baptiste already do very well against the Samuel, just constantly using the Fearsome Shade to knock him out of the Drifting Dark or throwing an Ordained on him as soon as he starts the Drifting Dark so he can't move with it. So this is it's a risky pickup for sure. For sure. And I mean, looking across the whole composition for Hammers, if any of them get caught out by a lance, they're not exactly tanky characters, but we'll see how that's going to pan out. Overall, across the course of the draft, how do we feel this one's gone? I really like TSM's draft. I think they, they, they won the draft here, but at the same time, Lance, uh, I mean, Lyra and Vox is really good against Baron because Lyra can bulwark and prevent Baron from jumping out. Mm -hmm. But you can crucible that and actually let Baron jump out when you can, the crucible is activated. So we'll mm -hmm. see how this plays out, but I think TSM's going to take this one. Yeah, I think TSM definitely has a stronger draft right. here and should be able to take it. So TSM definitely touted as the favorites. They did beat Cloud9 yesterday, so you've got to assume that they're coming in strong here. Get involved on social media. Hashtag Vainglory8. We want to know who you are supporting and whether you think TSM has what it takes or whether Hammers are going to bring down that hammer. It's time to head on to the Halcyon Fold for our first North American game. Thank you very much, Munch. And I'm not entirely sure how many times that joke has been made with the hammer and nail on the side of hammers, but I'll let you off. TSM versus hammers. And uh, once again, a lot of priority has been taken on that Baron pick. Yeah, Baron definitely making a, a name for himself here on the last tournament of 2.5 before we move on to the update with Grace. I, I'm quite intrigued to see the Samuel, though. I think we've got to talk about that a little bit. It's being played by Archaic. It's kind of an Archaic tech, too, because no one's really been playing it in the last uh, couple of weeks, at least from the games that I've been seeing. 
how is it going to do here is a good question. Now, it does have the ability to poke out Baron. Uh, it also has the ability to sort of spike a little bit earlier. Maybe they can make some plays happen as a result. And the ultimate is great if he just tries to like play around the edge of the fights. You can really force him to commit in and go for something aggressive with the Oblivion. So there's things that the Samuel can do. I'm curious to see how it's going to work out already, actually, putting some pressure in the lane. But it's definitely uh, going to have... An interesting matchup against this Batiste as well. Two heroes that spike uh, relatively early. Got oh, fight, that is though. a big ordain. Hang on a second. Playboy Afro's in a lot of trouble. Von C is going to be there and already showing the power of the Batiste. Okay, you know, he was trying to drift in dark backwards, but it wasn't going to happen. Playboy goes down. First blood going over to TSM. Yeah, very nice uh, rotate up there by Von C, but you've got to question Archaic's decision to go so deep for a, a kill that probably just wasn't going to happen. It's not as if he'd shopped yet and had enough damage to really make an impact there. Uh, I think it was a little bit over aggressive. And on top of that, Von C, this is something we're seeing more and more. Batiste is really another hero alongside Baron that's made a big name for themselves on 2.5. It'll be interesting to see if that continues on. 2.6, but you know, over in Europe today, for example, Mouse Sports playing that hero to great success, and of course, uh, we also saw that yesterday doing quite well. A little bit more hit and miss, but overall, definitely a strong pick in the current update. Based on the state of the game right now, though, TSM definitely has some momentum off the back of that kill. The on them to really keep the pressure on if they want to try and have one of those early game uh, Baron victories that we saw so much from Rox Armada at the Mobile Masters or it'll be on hammers to try and find that opportunity to really come back in the early game here. They certainly have the potential to. They have some good damage on their lineup. Lyra, very good at harassing, getting people low, and setting kills up for ganks coming out of Samuel. Yeah, that it is. I mean, right now, Archaic, just uh, playing a little bit more scared, you'd say, just farming his backs now. And with Von C having that first blood, will give him a priority over that mid Elder Tree, and so he's gonna be able to take that away without too much of a worry. And now we do see Hammers rotating down just to make sure they can kind of spot out Von C. But he's always ma already made his way back to the front, back to front. And now back to backs, they are going to take those as well. And now we've got to look up the team fight composition here, AJ. And we've got to say to ourselves, TSM, they've got a lot of CC in the term of, um, in terms of Flash X right now. Best Chuck has got a lot of set up for him. And an iconic duo we are, we have been seeing is this Baron with the Batiste, just because Batiste can lock someone in in a confined area using that ordained and then Baron can just lay waste and lay havoc to them ion cannon alike and it's going to cost it's going to cost hammers a lot of resources in terms of reflex box and whatnot to actually disengage from that fight but we've seen playboy afro i mean in the challenger series kind of make a name for himself on these support uh, supportive heroes and on this lyra i mean it's still going to be a big pick is at least until the new update comes out so one thing that I think we've really got to watch for talking about team fights, Jaws, is actually how Hammers decides to play them. They certainly have a composition where if they get the lead in a team fight, if they have a health advantage, etc., they can beat you know a, a team with a lot of pressure. They can definitely chase and just keep the pain train going. But against the Batiste, one thing we've seen more and more this weekend is just how good Fearsome Shade is. Right? Like it is absolutely one of the best abilities at disengaging a team fight. So. The, the concern is like, okay, hammers, they can't really play too aggressive unless they get a perfect crucible on that ability. But then there's also a Githian wall to knock them back. So are they just gonna play out of range? Whoa, wow. man impale. What was that? Triple impale, drifting dark backwards. Now the Playboy Afro is in the front line and pays for it his life. On Z picking up his second kill of the game and the second kill for TSM as well. A triple impale coming out from Flash X. Don't retire yet, son, because you've got still some more fight in you. That was a beautiful impale coming out of flash x i mean i was thinking that these fights would be more about the poke that someone like a samuel can offer it, it is greater range than you know a lot of what we could maybe see coming out of team solo mid but if you get engaged on from a bush like that you're not going to have an opportunity to play with the range advantage that your team in inherently has so that's definitely not the situation that hammers wants fight wise team solo mid are finding really nice windows of opportunity to make plays perhaps earlier than a lot of people might expect a Baron to be able to do it. Of course, Batiste, though, is a hero who can be very aggressive early on, ordained to some of the strongest CC early just because it forces your opponents to sit there and take damage, something that Baron, you know, needs his teammates to set up for him is, is you know, the poor positioning of your opponents. Plus, Vonsi already has a Shatter Glass five and a half minutes in. That's going to be doing a lot of work uh, just from a damage perspective.
Yeah, those bad mojos are really going to start to pack a punch now. I'm oh, ordained actually straight on starting all over. Oh my goodness. 237 damage. Bad mojo on top of your head starting. He has to back off. He's going to get a little bit of healing from Playboy. Playboy now just wandering forward, but best track at A. He's got a lot of damage at this point as well. Has got the Star of Peter. There comes another Impale. Another kill. <laughs> Landing onto Playboy Afro and starting all over. It's going to fall as well. That fearsome Shay locking him up and locking him down for the fourth kill of the game. TSM now going to push their way onto this first tier turret. Archaic doesn't really stand a chance at this point. That's going to go down with ease. Yeah, it's really hard for Hammers to just straight up win a fight right now, but Flash X does need to be careful of the damage coming in here. Archaic stuck in the Ordain. Might be trying to keep this fight moving, actually. So here's the thing. Archaic, he's got a Frostburn right now. That's what he went first. Now, I used to be not a fan of this item a couple of updates ago uh, as, as a rush, but actually in this game, I think it's, it's fine for Archaic to go for that. I understand why he might want to. The problem is that if you try and do a straight up fight like that, and everyone's stacked, it's not going to go well. Like, that Frostburn is all about getting some poke damage down, playing around the periphery of the fights. And right now, Hammers just are not positioning appropriately to play to their strengths. It's allowing for Flash X to get these big impales. Like, if you're Hammers, you need to spread out. You need to be playing in kind of like a triangular formation around your opponents, so they have to choose one, not, you know, they, they shouldn't be able to go in and actually land things onto every single member of Hammers. I mean, they just not being able to get preordained by Von C is kind of the catalyst to a lot of these fights, I think. I mean, dropping that in, uh, ordained, locking up at least one member will result in TSM going a little bit more oh. aggressive here. Nice turn on starting all over. The rocket's going to fly straight and true. There comes Flash X with a Githian wall, but not needed. It's best Chuck is going to be able to pick up another kill. These ordains are setting up beautifully for Flash X's impales, too. I mean, any way you slice this, there is a CC chain that's going to work out for Team Solo Mid. You've only got one reflex block right now. There's not a Crucible on Playboy Afro. You can block maybe the Githian wall, but then you get ordained and you have nowhere to go. And if you stand still, you're going to get impaled. But if you run into the wall, you're going to get impaled. It's just like redundancy of crowd control effects on the side of Team Solo Mid. It's only going to get worse later on, uh, to be honest, as the damage ramps up and you have to make these snap decisions on hammers. It's time for them to start playing. A, you know, pretty conservatively, to be honest, trying to get some farm. They really need starting all over to maybe hit one more item, Archaic, to hit his second uh, offensive item before they can actually do things here. Team Solo Mid, you know, they can just keep setting the pace. They really can, and Best Chuck is getting uh, to a point where even the Baron is able to do that early game work, like we saw from Rocks Armada and some in North America yesterday. The, the one thing about TSM, you, you mentioned it perfectly there, was that they can play this game at their own pace. They, quite easily as well. Flash X and Bonsi, their kill setting up potential is absolutely massive. TSM just going in for another little engage here. Starting all over. It's going to dodge away. Sonic Zoom straight out of the all day, but it's not going to matter. Those rockets are going to fly through. Bonsi finishes it off with the bad mojo. Hammer's now backing off. Very, very low HP on Playboy Afro right now. Archaic with the reflex block, but that turret is going to go down. TSM are still going to want to fight this one. Flash X taking a fair bit of damage from that turret. It goes down. Oblivion come through as well. Does end up missing. Von C pushing forward. Archaic is having to back off here. It's going to be the passageway used as well from Playboy just to get over the base walls. But that will be TSM taking the second turret. Nine minutes in. Look at the gold lead. Stretching to 5,000 already. Just taking complete control of this game. You know, even from the draft. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, hang on a second here. AJ not getting his chance to speak. That's a double impale, followed by the ordained as well. Starting all over. It's going to be able to trade at least one back. In fact, two. Okay, it picks up a double. Oh, hang on a second. TSM on the retreat now. Flash X, the only member left alive. And now Hammers. Maybe they get their chance to push this turret in. But just looking at the waves here, it's not actually going to be achievable. That was a nice attempt by Team Solomon, but you got to be really careful about fighting in a choke point like that when Flash isn't actually in position to use Githian Wall. It ends up becoming, I, I think, slightly better for Hammers just because of the splash damage they have out of the Samuel. Now they're going to get a turret too, but here comes Von C. Von C is going to be here. Reflex Book does come out to block the Impair once more, starting all over, doing a fair bit of damage. Von C trading that one quite happily. His bad mojo is doing a fair bit, but starting all over when he gets stacking, when he gets ramping, obviously he doesn't have the breaking point just yet, but when he gets those basic attacks down, the resonance bounce is going. He can deal a fair bit of damage in a short burst of time. Starting all over, he's got the poison ship at the moment, surrounded by the sorrow blade. He's starting to work his way up, maybe towards a breaking point here, or I mean a little bit more defensive capabilities would be rather handy at this current situation, because both boss, Best Chuck and Bonds here appear there with power spikes as well. Monocle, Sora Blade, Tension Bow, what more do you need as a Baron? 
Uh, not much, <laughs> to be completely honest. Three item Baron has always been and probably will always be uh, a very fearsome force. And it's a double root again. Another flash. double impale, another Igithium will as well. Playboy Akra in a lot of trouble. Does follow the portal all the way through with those bad motors raining hell down on hammers. There's some shade using for the engagement here. Another double impale lands. And then a nice dodge by Flash X to get out of that oblivion. PSM still chasing hammers, but they are going to decide to back off here. A gold miner is available to them and the rest of hammers jungle as well. Flash X has just been such a catalyst to these fights, a true standout performer at the moment. He has indeed, but it's important to notice how these fights are going less and less convincingly in Team Solo Midsway, and I think Immense you've got to understand this for two different collected. reasons. The first is that we've now got um, the Broken Myth on Archaic. He really needed his second item because he's not the one dying first in these fights. It gives him a long time to ramp up. And everyone on, on Team Solomid, they kind of want to just train in and like jump on your base and be up in your grill, which allows for Samuel to get the splash damage down that he needs. It's enabling him to actually compete a little bit in these fights. Also, though, Team Solo Mid are not able to abuse Hammer's positioning in the same way that they were earlier because Hammer's aren't positioning as poorly as they were earlier. They're fighting in much smarter places. Yes, there's going to be moments like the beginning of that fight where you just don't know where Team Solo Mid is and get rooted. But because they're so far behind, they've got to strike a balance, right, between buying Vision and using it. And I, I do think that Hammer's are starting to play around what Team Solo Mid has a little bit better than they were. They're definitely not out of the woods yet, but they're on that path. Because later and later on to this game, Archaic is really going to start being able to do so much poke that Team Solomon has no choice but to just go in and try and fight even when it doesn't make sense for them. Well, we'll see if they can find their way out of that deep dark word. The Iron Cannon is going to come down. It's going to hit Playboy. Now, that's going to get blocked, but it doesn't matter because Monty throws a bad mojo and it is bad news for starting all over. Ends up falling down. Playboy Afro once more with that passageway over the wall. Gape. No help for you, Archaic, unfortunately, buddy. You're gonna have to just get a solitary recall off. TSM, once more, fighting starting all over. This guy is 0-5 right now. You can see the amount of pressure they're putting on already. And um, good old TSM, we know him, we love him. They do manage to just push these leads and it's very, very hard to come back from a Baron who's this fed already. It really is, and, and starting all over, we do have to talk about his performance. This is a kid who last season came into it and we were like, man, this guy could be one of the best just need to work on sort of some emotional things and his consistency. He rose to a point where during the regular season, at least, he certainly seemed to be in contention very heavily uh, for that best laner in North America spot. But he was unable to tend the London Championships. And on top of that, we haven't seen him play in some time. He might need a little bit of work to really get back to that place that he was in because he hasn't had the consistent play in the break that maybe some of the other players have. I can't speak to his practice regimen. Uh, certainly, he wouldn't have been practicing with his team in the build-up to London. So we are seeing a different starting all over than we saw before. But I still I still think Archaic can make this happen for his team. And if they position better and if they move as a team better, Hammers have the potential to win these fights. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but they really, really do. In that fight, there was too much of a split. You know, Hammers wasn't playing as a unified front. Now Team Solo Mid moving up. There is Vision here, though, from Hammers. They might try and jump on the back line. Wow. Oh, God. Well, you say jump on the back line. Starting all over was the one to jump. <laughs> Playboy and Archaic did not want anything to do with it. Although now TSM getting control of this lane. We'll see if Playboy wants to make a play here. It's going to heal up, but there's a lot of rockets being rained down from above from Best Chuck. They're stepping forward. Gideon Wall isn't going to land. It's actually going to hit now. Playboy Afrin going back below that. Burp Bad Mojo is going to hit him, but it's not going to matter. Fountain's going to heat him up. There's the vision shake <laughs> now. Playboy Afro can't do anything. It's starting all over. Just gets demolished by Archaeox. Still putting out a lot of damage. Best Chuck and he's going to have to retreat here. Passage Rage going to get follow through from Fonte. He's going to find the kill on, uh, on Playboy if he can find that ordained. He does. Bad Mojo to finish him off as well. I mean a 2 for 0 trade in the favor of TSM. 14 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock, AJ. 15 seconds, or I should say 10 seconds now, is till that Kraken is going to spawn. My goodness. Best Chuck, he's 2, 1, and 8, but look at Von C, the true carry in that jungle roll, 9, 1, and 2. You know, that was a 2 0, but you got to look at how low several members of Team Solo Mid get. It, it's becoming closer and closer, and Archaic, maybe one more item. You know, he's been sat on 2 offensive for a long time. One more item could be the point he uh, really comes online here. That being said, Best Chuck has now picked up a fourth item, and he is just hitting like a truck at the moment. It's hard, and, and the one thing which is bad news for Hammers compositionally is they do not have a way at all of killing someone quickly. Like, they need an extended fight. Baron does do well in those situations too, so 
it's it's honestly compositionally getting to the point where uh, it, it's fairly even, I think. But Team Solo Mid are just having the edge. It is going to be another fight here. Oh, yes, there is. Starting all over. That's one, two, three. Rockets hit him, and he just gets destroyed. Bad Mojo to follow up. Playboy Afro on the tree. Now, Archaic in a 1v3 situation. There comes your Dane. It is going to get blocked. Kraken's going to join in the fight, but it's not going to matter because Von C takes that kill. The Kraken's going to get started up as well. TSM, 13 and 2, AJ. These, fight, these fights are over quicker than I can get words out of my mouth. Starting all over. Falls once more for his seventh death, and Archaic. He's got two kills on the board, but that's the only two kills for Hammers right now. Kraken is going to go over to TSM, and that is looking like the end of the game. And you got to think, Hammers, looking right now, they want to look towards game two, and maybe taking that Baron off the board. Yeah, that, that last fight was really an illustration of the things we were talking about with starting all over. The positioning there, just not all right for his team. He was way too far forwards, had to use his Sonic Zoom to jump further into the team of his opponents to get on the other side of his team and get to safety, and that's not what you want to be doing. He needs to be already in position with someone like Archaic backing him up, or someone like Playboy Afro. We're not seeing very many um, you know, arcane passages used to great effect. Part of the reason for that is because, you know, Playboy's Afro's, his teammates are not there with him for him to set them up for success a lot of these times. Things are getting out of control here. 13-2, Team Solo mid, they're pushing in with a Kraken right now. Well, there comes the Iron Cannon. It's only going to strike Playboy, but it's going to take out that turret with ease. Archaic now just uh, kiting backwards using that Drifting Dark and signing all over trying to find something here. That's going to be a nice silence onto Best Jug, but he's going to leap away. There's the block on oh, no. the Oblivion as well. Fearsome Shade onto two people. Wombo combo, you say. TSM find one on starting all over. That Kraken is knocking on the base of Hammers. And now Archaic needs to find a little something here. Another rocket comes down and another kill comes through. Best Jug finds another. Finally gets his third kill on the board. There goes the the turrets there goes the vein crystal this will be tsm taking this first game in its best of three very impressive stuff from team solo mid they did have the edge from the beginning when it came to the draft uh but honestly hammers could have made more proactive steps to maybe take this game home team solo mid nothing taken away from them though they played all of these fights pretty much perfectly except for that one in the choke point you gotta worry about this team honestly i think hammers uh need to really tighten their game up going into game number two Yes, they will do. And I mean, only two deaths dropped on the side of TSM. We'll see if they can do any better next game or can Hammers come back. But, WeJ, Bacon, Joe, this is your time now to break this down even further. Oh, this is our time. There's a lot of pressure on us right now. <laughs> We've got to step up and tell you who has stepped up, TSM. After their first game against Cloud9 yesterday, that seemed to just be an anomaly. And ever since, they have been playing near flawlessly. Yeah, it was, I mean... You heard us yesterday, if you were watching, we were questioning like their mentality, their motivation, like all sorts of stuff, because their first game was that bad, but they have just completely turned it around and are absolutely firing on all cylinders. Now, this Baron play from Best Chuck and A is the one thing I really want to focus on because he has just been absolutely stellar with this hero. The last three games he's been able to play it, and last three games they've won, and this one was convincing. Yeah, Sweet Jay, run me through some of these replays a little bit, because I know you were really uh, complimenting Flash X. Yeah, he landed a lot of double roots, and look at the combo, the fear onto starting, because starting got uh, Chuck pretty low. They're also grouping up a lot, like like uh, AJ was saying. They can't group up against a Baron, and, and like look at look at the value he's getting out of all this burst damage, because every basic attack that he lands, it does 130% AoE damage, so you can't really group up with one another. It's going to give Baron way too much value in these fights and it's going to go ahead the damage factor is going to go in TSM's favor um, and I would say Flash played out his mind I mean he had a lot of great gifting walls a lot of amazing roots like double man roots single man roots that really decide to fight and as soon as that happens Ordain will come out or Ordain would set up the root and Baron would drop motors in there I mean the combination Batiste Lance is just a very deadly combo um, and that's something that you should not give over to a team so I really question the rhyme ban and where that came from so in the game, AJ was saying a lot about how Hammers needed to be more proactive. They needed to be making actions on the map. What exactly was it that Hammers should have been doing during like the early and mid game to actually find themselves on the scoreboard? I mean, that's a tough question because they put themselves in a really tough spot to, for doing that in the draft. Like they didn't really have the tools available to them to go uh, super aggressive and try and win out trades in the early game. And 
then by the time they had the chance to go and make look for an aggressive place, they're already really far behind. Yeah, what they need to do is they need to engage first and not let uh, Baptiste or, or, or Baron initiate. They need to portal in their bulwark immediately so that Chuck cannot jump out and then put a Samuel sleep and try to basically lock down and delete the Baron immediately. And they needed to engage and more often than not, they got poked out and engaged on. Yeah, so they needed to play the fights a little bit more aggressively and be be the aggressors, be more proactive as AJ worded it. I can definitely agree with that one. We'll see whether their drafts are going to change moving forward in this series. Do you guys, I mean, Bacon, you've just been saying how with the draft, you feel like Hammers were at a significant disadvantage. Yep. What do they need to change up coming into this one? Well, I think if you're going to let, first of all, you have to ban Baron against Best Chuck and A. He's just too good mm -hmm. with this hero. Baron's too strong right now. Uh, but they also, like I said, you know, yeah, going, being, if they were the ones that were making the, being the aggressors, maybe they're able to turn that around. But like I said, they, when they got to the point where they could make a portal engage and look for a, you know, an engagement of their own, they were already behind. They had just fallen behind in the very early game. So I really want to see them try and get something that has a little bit more early game focus because Team Solo Mid is and always has been a team that if they see that you are not an early game focused team, they will just destroy you in the early game so that you don't have an edge when your team can finally start turning it around. Yeah, and I mean... Is this a different Hammers to what we saw last season? Like, in terms of the, the style that they're playing, like, are they a much less aggressive team? I think it has to do with a new roster. They're trying to figure out their communication, their synergy. Um, Tigers was their main shot caller. You know, he was kind of their macro, their, the smartest person on that team, so to speak. Um, and he was kind of calling rotations and what to do, etc. So I think that with um, the new members of the team, that, that may be lacking slightly. And I think that's going to take time to build. Yeah. All right, so I don't want to talk too soon. Obviously, this is a best of three. We're only in game one. But are we a little bit worried for Harris? Hammers moving forward throughout the VGA year, or is it just because they're against TSM? TSM are looking on form right now. It's, I think, a little bit of both. Obviously, TSM is just is a very, very strong team. But at the same time, I am going to be a little bit worried for Hammers because, like Sweetie was saying, T-Tigers was such a crucial part to yes. what they were able to do last season and building this new roster around starting all over, if you don't have that big shot caller or a big playmaker with him, you know, one person alone is not going to be able to win games. So, Sweej, Baron taken Grump -jaw, away, yep. Grumpjaw as well. Baron Grumpjaw is going to be the ban. That's what TCM banned yesterday was that Grumpjaw ban. Uh, Hammers will most likely pick up the Vox here as a first pick or even Lyra if they want to pick up that Lyra first. But I have a feeling they're going to go with... Oh, they're going to actually go with Glaive. So they're going to potentially weapon power... Uh, weapon lane the glaive here. So Tizen's gonna have an answer to this glaive for sure. We'll see what that answer is going to be as we move on in the draft. Very early glaive coming out from Hammers. A lot of power picks available. What are you expecting, Bacon? I mean, I'm expecting them to look for, well, I was, wasn't actually gonna say the Vox right off the bat, but they do go ahead and take the Vox, then gonna have their choice of bands. Maybe look for, well, I was gonna- Catherine ban. Interesting that one to come out there. Definitely, yeah. again, another one that's kind of surprising. So the reason why is because if Catherine, they get, uh, Hammer's really good at playing Glaive, Catherine Celeste, that, that's a comp that they're known for in the rank queue. So that's why they banned the Catherine, which is very smart, I feel, from TSN. This also opens up Lyra for them. They can now play Lyra um, with Vox and then pick a really hard counter into Glaive, like, say, Cruel, Rhyme, etc., or even Baptiste to help the Vox survive. So, I, But I think Arden may be a pick here for TSM over Lyra, oh, yeah. but we'll see what they're going to decide here. Um, on part of T-Stand, but I feel like they might go for Lyra instead of Arden since Lyra counters Arden to a certain extent. So let's see what they're going to decide. Yeah, and we've seen Flash X play a lot of both of those. So both definitely very viable options here. And Arden has, you know, I mean, it's one of Flash X's signature heroes, but they do play a lot of the Lyra as well. So like I said, either of those options, I would have no issue with them picking up. It's, it, they both work very well. They're both just top tier captains. They're gonna go ahead and lock down their jungle. I think this is because of the fact that they know they can go with either of those two. So they're saying, you know what, we don't really care. I wanted to one. call Celeste Lance immediately because that's the comp that they played. Um, and I knew that they're gonna pick Celeste uh, Lance into this competition because Celeste with her range is actually really good into Baptiste since he outranges, she outranges Baptiste here. So now they're probably gonna pick most likely uh, either Finn or Arden, something that can counter this, this triple CC composition here. 
We'll see what that option is going to be. It is going to be Arden. You're yep. absolutely correct, as ever, Sweet Jay, in the <laughs> draft. But now we have our compositions locked on in. We've got that Celeste on the side of Hammers. This is what we were is looking this for. Is going to change the fortune? I don't know if it's going to be enough to change their fortunes. I think Team Solo Mid just looks like a better team at the moment. Mm -hmm. and has obviously a lot more synergy, a lot more time together as a team than this Hammers lineup. But if we're going to see something from Hammers, I want to see it with this Celeste. I want to see how well they can run this. If they could just even put up a fight against Team Solomid this early in the season, that will speak volumes about what they can pull off later on. What do you think? It's this is their comfort pick, so I'm going to go with Hammers for this. It's going to be uphill battle, but this is their comfort pick. Starting on Celeste is a god, and I feel like they might be able to take this game away. All right, so Hammers may well be able to keep this rivalry on the rise. TSM looking dominant in that first game. We'll see whether they can replicate that success. We want to know what you guys at home think as well. Hashtag Vainglory8 is the way that you can get in touch with us. We're on Twitter and all the other social medias as well, but Twitter is where the main conversation is going to be kicking off. And speaking of kicking off, let's head on into this second game. Thank you very much, Munch. That's right, we are kicking off game number two. TSM over on the red, Hammers over on the blue. Can they turn this one around? Can they get the reverse sweep in this series in a 2-1? I mean, they're on their comfort picks, like Sweet Jay said, so we'll have to wait and see if TSM can bring their A game yet again. Absolutely, and I think they do have a composition which sets them up for success here. It's going to be all about whether or not they can keep the pressure on before starting all over gets kind of out of control. We do know he likes Celeste a lot uh, based on historical performances, so it's definitely a hero he's comfortable on. Big spikes for a Celeste, definitely around that level 8 point. When you get your overdriven Heliogenesis, you got the additional range. That's actually really going to help against Batiste because the uh, the range will actually outrange his ordained, so you can threaten him from out of range of his, uh, his real threat range too, which is really nice. I like the fact that they're putting Lance up here too, though. They're going to try and keep starting all over safe. Strategic choice out of hammers that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that it is. I mean, best Chuck, he's on this box now. Dark contrast to what we saw last game. He's starting all over on that pick. But Von C, I mean, he's got the Batiste again. This is uh, it's not really too much of a surprise. There's only two bands in the current system. Archaic taking his front. Von C is actually going to steal one of those away. He's going to get Afterburn, though. Playboy Afro is here. Has got the Impale. Doesn't have the Githium wall, so can't shove him into that wall. Von C is going to be able to dash out of the way of it. Flash X is going to be able to retreat and meet Von C. Archaic going fairly low here. He might just go down. First Blood once again going over to Von C and TSM. Playboy Afro, level one Lance, not doing all too much. And Flash X just chasing him away now. And that's it. Von C, you know, he gets the ball rolling and it can really be hard to come back from it. That was not a fight that you should be picking as hammers. Unless you land the Impale, you have no chance, basically, in that two versus two. Uh, even if you land the Impale, you don't really have a good chance because Arden giving that massive vanguard to Von C for a start is just a huge amount of defense. You don't have anything comparable uh, between the Glaive and the Lance. But in addition to that, Batiste actually uh, has a tremendous amount of sustain just by virtue of his heroic perk and once that's gone he turns around has the empowerment is gonna easily out damage archaic so yeah i think it was very misguided honestly of hammers to try and pick a fight there von c moved in yes it was annoying that he was there but at that point you just need to back up he's too strong early on here especially with that early armor he was reducing so much of the damage that both playboy afro or archaic i mean that's the story of this game again isn't it the the amount of scaling on both of these sides like you said starting all over he's on this celeste pick but he really needs to get ramping he really needs to get going at least having that overdrive on the oh. heliogenesis you can start one of these fights and thinking of starting fights they're going to jump straight onto von c they want his revenge that vanguard is going to lead him to safety it's going to pop those boots as well but three members of hammers just pushing him now von c does manage to get a triple bad mojo not sure how long he's going to last though comes in best chuck and a is also going to meet in the fight von c is going to do first casualty the kill going over to starting all over and now best chuck has got free reign over this fight hammers their health bars are dropping their members are falling as well or is going to go down down a cake is going to use that afterburn to get away flash x is going to still going to chase starting all over and do is in full energy so cannot use that blood <laughs> brothers beautiful core collapse going to dissuade tsm with that double man stun 
All right, honestly, that could have gone a lot worse. If Flash had boosted earlier, he would have provided vision for Best Chuck to attack over the wall, and he actually might have been able to get more damage down onto starting. Uh, and Archaic, see the center going down there. I didn't actually catch who, that, that one's starting all over, didn't it? So nice steal away be. there from Hammers. Um, but yeah, that, that was a very close fight. Again, Hammers honestly getting lucky that didn't go worse for them. That, that really could have. I mean, the best Chuck could have stacked up even more. Speaking oh about stacking up, looks like Hammers want to stack up some kills. Flash X is going to get taken out that last auto attack from starting all over, following all the way back to the turret. It's so sad seeing one of those very, very slow moving orbs kill you, but another kill towards Hammers, another kill towards starting all over. This ramp is getting us so quick now. It's always very demoralizing when the, uh, the fade away Heliogenesis comes through and takes you out. Nice work by starting all over, though. He's found two of the kills, you know, of the two on his team. So he's actually getting a, a decent amount of gold here, hitting his spikes a little bit earlier. This is allowing him to pick up an Eve of Harvest only four and a half minutes in. That's actually a big pickup, you know. It, it depends. Once Bass Chuck gets the Poison Shiv, he's going to have some mitigation for that sustain. Uh, but it's going to allow right now, until that happens, we're starting all over to really match some of the sustain coming in from Von C and his heroic perk. Uh, and actually, good uh, CS coming in from starting all over too. You know, he's actually setting it more than best. Chuck Hammers is finding ways of keeping starting all over in a good position, even in the early game here. What well, we saw in game number one that TSM had a 5k goal game. It's not looking quite that way this time with Hammers having, you know, sitting about even gold right now, five minutes in. Yeah, I do believe uh, my client's having a little bit of an issue here, but we're all speeded up now. We're all good to go. It's all there. Every, all the buys came in at once and starting all over managed to dash over the gold mine pits somehow. We're all back into the game, all nice and bubbly. Picking up that big power spike of the fountain there. It's going to be very important for him. Ordain's actually going to land onto two oh people boy. here. Best check's going to come in. But uh, uh, Archaic says not today. But oh, that's huge. Get that fountain used on him. Massive fearsome shade. That is going to be huge. CSM are going to turn around this fight. Okay, go really low. Best Chuck stacking up those resonance bounces. Can he find anything? Hammers' health bars are so, so low. They're blinking at this point with Archaic fleeing for his life. Is it going to get the recall off? Best, uh, um, best. Playboy Afro even is going to try and help Celeste, but starting all over does end up falling. That's Chuck NA and Von C pumping out that damage at this point in the game. Have to put a lot of damage onto that tier one turret now. Fearsome Shade is bananas. That ability just totally single handedly won the fight for Team Solo mid. Uh, Von C thankfully able to hit level six on time, even with some of those earlier fights uh, being a bit dicey for him dying by his sentry. You know, once you get that ability, can reset a fight until Crucible comes in. And resetting a fight is, is a really big deal against a heavy, like, sudden engage composition like what you have with Afterburn and Impale. Like, you might get jumped on, you might not expect it, but so long as you got Fearsome Shade and you don't die in that initial burst, you can, you can turn it around. Like, it, it's almost a guarantee. So Hammers, they honestly need to play kind of safe until they hit Crucible. Like, I don't think they should be going for these fights yet because that ability alone will single-handedly win TSM fights, and it's up again in six seconds. Well, Ordained is up as well. Von C, what does he want to make a play? He does. He's got a stun on Archaic. Archaic's going to use that afterburn to get Best Chuck away from his face. Flash X, not level six yet. No Gauntlet for him. But you've got to say, that Fearsome Shade into a Gauntlet is looking a scary, scary combo. This Flash X does ding six. Very close to it, about halfway there at this current point. But now, there's like they want to siege on this tier one turret. That is bad mojo and ordains putting out a lot of damage but like you said a little bit of sustain there from starting all over has got a couple of potions to chunk through and playboy afro does have uh the... my goodness i almost forgot the name then something i, I can't remember here, it, but hey the fountain that's the one here we go a fight's happening there's a mortal wound going straight over that's going to reduce a lot of that healing best check and he does get after her but it's not going to matter fishing shade wants more coming up and just stunning up hammers. Playboy Afro very, very low in this team fight. Can they find the kill? TSM are struggling to find executing blows on hammers right now. Another Ordain comes out on Archaic. He doesn't get stunned up this time. Waits out the duration. Bad mojo onto three people though from Von C. 2-1 with a shatter glass. He's doing a lot of work in short spaces of times. And hammers right now just crippling it seems under this pressure. You can really see that Team Solo Mid's gotten in the head of Hammers a little bit. For example, starting all over at the beginning of that sort of trade, uh, actually walked into the Wall of Nordained right before it faded out, even though he wasn't really under threat. In fact, Best Chuck kind of jumped too far forwards, and no one from Hammers capitalized on that. Like, he was right on the turret and just used Sock Zoom, but no one went for that, that kill. And I think, you know, this is 
what happens when Vonsi just styles on you like he did in the fight before. You don't really feel like you can engage because it's really difficult to. In that instance with the tower backing you up though, uh, you know, that, that turret's going to do a lot of work. Maybe they actually could have. Regardless, Team Solo Mint, they're the ones setting the pace of this game, and right now, hammers are just dancing to the beat of their drum. Well, we'll see if that drum can turn into a whole guitar. Just everything. Microphone. There's three of them. They can do it. They can make a small band. There's a big ordain, though, onto three people. There's Chuck and A. Fairly low. Has to exit the fight, but so is starting all over. Can't play too far forward. Gauntlet comes down. Is going to stun up a cake, and now Playboy Afro just completely zoned out, but so is Flash X. They finally find the executing flow. Von C chucking that bad mojo. Okay, X is going to come in for an upper, oh. but it is going to get blocked. He's amongst three people. He ends up going down. Von C with the regen. Is it going to be enough to follow, follow up on the kill on starting all over? Starting all over. Just managing to cut it back in time. That Helio Genesis making sure Flash X can't execute that blow but still TSM with the innate advantage. That was a very nice fight from Team Solo Mid. That being said, I like that Hammers knew exactly how much they could get away with starting all over. Did pick up that kill on the Vonsi, which is very nice. Got some shutdown gold as a result. Still, Team Solo Mid taking a turret. They're definitely putting the pressure on. With a 2,000 gold lead right now, things are looking good for them. They do have to maybe concede some pressure onto this turret, though. Flash X the only one who can stick around for now. That might sort of encourage Von C to make a move up here, try and clear the wave. Well, Flash X has got 55 seconds until the Gauntlet is available, but Von C still has that fearsome shade and wait for it is up for best Chuck in a second as well. And now we're seeing starting all over come online. This guy's three and one right now, 109 CS. That's 10, 11 over best Chuck and A. He's got the Broken Myth. He's got the Eve of Harvest. So he is pumping out a lot of damage as long as he can get those Heliogenesis set up and them exploding all across TSM. But the problem with TSM, they've got a lot of engagement and a lot of mobility like you touched on earlier, which is just allowing them to just get out of the way and get on top of the main carries of Hammers. Honestly, the biggest power spike right now that Hammers have that they didn't earlier is a Crucible on Playboy Afro. That's absolutely massive. They urgently needed it to deal with Mon C. It lets them stay in a fight and actually do the damage that they need to do. You can see with the level 8 spike on Celeste, they're able to pressure a little bit here, but they're getting a lot of damage oh, down. Ordained Gauntlet as well. Best Chuck and A stunned up at the back. Hawk Collapse is going to be massive. There comes the redirect as well from Archaic, but a three man bad mojo wants more. Best Chuck and A, he's just won't be wanting the support. It's too easy for him. That's a double kill for TSM already with Big Bo a Playboy Afro just having to back off here. That was absolutely massively and well played from Von C, ordained straight into the Gauntlet, and TSM are just running rampant over Hammers. Honestly, Batiste right now is one of these heroes that just has very explosive games. If he gets off to a lead, he hits a spike so early, and he can build damage and get sustained from it because of his perk, it really makes him difficult to deal with early on, and you're seeing that here. That was a nice attempt. You know, Best Chuck NA nearly killed right at the onset of that fight, but it was not enough because the follow-up wasn't there and the positioning wasn't appropriate for this sort of extended fight that starting all over at the very least wants to be going for. Right now, Team Solo Mid have a stranglehold on the game, but it's important to remember, as we talk about frequently, a Celeste can come back into things really strongly later into the game, especially as things like an Aegis is picked up and Vonsi isn't chunking her quite as hard. I mean, here we go. We are at that point now. They're stacking up, they're scaling up, like you said. Starting all over, he's uh, itemizing a little bit more defensively now, but we don't normally see that from a lot of Celeste. You know, they want to hang back. They want the ability just to get those Heliogenesis off. The siege from the Celeste can be quite monstrous. But TSM, garage band of professional Vainglory players, is just running rampant over Hammers right now. They keep referring to him as a little band. I think it's a nice little, you know, touch to the way they're playing right now. All in sync with each other. We'll see if they can do that next. I mean, Flash X, look at the cooldowns. Two seconds on that Gauntlet, Fearsome Shade. Everything is up for them right now. And the only real thing that Hammers have got going for them is that massive Crucible that you were talking about. If they manage to Crucible the Gauntlet or the Fearsome Shade, it's their fight to take as long as starting all over can get some damage off. Honestly, I think Gauntlet might not even be uh, worth crucibling in this game. You should be saving your individual reflex blocks for that. The really big simultaneous hit skill that you need to deal with is Fearsome Shade. I would be, ex I expect, starting all over with the caliber of player that he is, to be able to know when it's appropriate to walk through a gauntlet wall with his own reflex block. And to be completely honest, aside from maybe a silence out of box, 
that's the only thing he's thinking about blocking, right? Like Ordained or Fearsome Shade, those are things he can play around uh, because of the Crucible coming out of his teammate, but he needs to deal with the Gauntlet, he needs to deal with the Wait For It, those are things which really shut him down. Wait For It, of course, does a lot of damage to what Celeste wants to do. Here comes the engage. Oh, hang though. on a minute. War treads into the Gauntlet. Von C's just laying down free damage, starting all over, already out the fight. They're going to chase him through this one. Fearsome Shade is going to hit, starting all over. Solar Storm's going to hit too. That was a beautiful Githian wall. Come from Playboy Afro, but best check is just kiting them down too easy. He finds oh. one. Is he going to find the next? Yes, he is. Almost goes down to a basic attack of starting all over. Geogenesis, not enough. TSM find another two kills. Three and Crystal nine. Century Crystal Sentry is dead. 14 minutes on the clock, and TSM opaling out of control. There is a 4,000 gold lead. Not as big as they had in game number one, but with this gold miner, it's going to stretch even further. Being Glory really is a game of inches, and that fight was won by just that. Starting all over, if he had more energy at the end, may have been able to pick up the kill onto Best Chuck. Similarly, Archaic actually had too little energy to use any of his abilities, and if he did, I think he would have stuck in the fight and helped kill Best Chuck. It was... The, the play was correct, right? Like, Hammers did the right thing. They were just a bit too far behind in gold, and sort of compositionally, they have some trouble against what Team Solomit is bringing to the fold here. You saw starting all over, be Crucible, right when that Fearsome Shade came out, perfect play, exactly what I want to see from them. And he actually chose a, an excellent moment to walk through the Gauntlet Wall with his own Reflex block. So it was, it was, again, exactly what I wanted them to be doing. They're just a little bit too far behind for even some of the correct plays to translate to one fights. When you're putting it like that, it just sounds so bad for Hammers. When the cor correct plays just aren't enough, that is... Devastating words, AJ. Devastating. We'll it see is. what Hammers have to say about that. Is. It is, but the biggest thing they were behind in at the beginning of that fight was energy, to be completely honest. And that's something they can have at any point. You know, Von C, Team Solomid, they didn't pick up a ton of items from that, but here comes the fight again. Here comes the fight again. Gorla comes down. It's only going to stun one, but that's the target they want. Apparently, Playboy Afro, long for this world, ends up falling. Von C picking up that kill. Kraken's on the menu now, boys. They are just going to take that one with absolute ease. Okay, I can starting all over. They might want to try and at least do something here. Solar Storm is available from starting. Could try for a sneaky, sneaky steal, but it's not going to happen. ESM are going to secure it. They're going to walk it down the lane. This very well could be the final few minutes for Hammers. Honestly, I like the fact that starting didn't try for a steal. Why try for the super high variance, like super random play, when your ultimate in a, in a team fight after you have some broken miss stacks does a really insane amount of damage, and everyone on the side of Team Solomid probably stacked on top of each other based on the kind of composition they have. Team Solomid, they want to go for this one straight away, though. They just want to fight, they want to fight some more because they know they got the damage. Fear. Oh, that's Get bad. Two. Playboy is completely zoned out here. Massive Science Arcade. He does manage to get the afterburn away, but TSM are continually pushing. That turret is going to fall. The Kraken is going to take one final swing, and it's going to get taken out. Solar Storm almost striking best Chuck. That uh, was close. Core Collapse comes through as well, but massive preordained. Massive mojo. It's not even bad mojo at this point. It's just absolutely devastation. Von C running rampant this Batiste pick. I feel you've got no chance in the world, my friend. Has to just run back to the base. Archaic. Is going to look a bit archaic after this game, I think. It's going to go back to the drawing board. Hammers, they're crumbling under TSM's might. TSM might just lead them to the final concert in the final at the end. Now Kraken is knocking on their doors. Archaic gets ordained once more. Fear comes out onto Playboy. He ends up going down. The Kraken's going to march on one. It's going to march on the next. But TSM decide at least one more gig before they end the game. Starting all over does get trapped in amongst the wall, though. It's going to reflex block it away. And TSM, they're just going to back off for maybe the final time. And Hammer's hanging in by just, I mean, the skin of their teeth here. It, that last fight again, you know, I, I feel like I've said this a few times and it's kind of indicative of maybe some sort of synergistic problems with a new lineup or maybe some inexperience on this kind of pressurizing uh, environment from Archaic and Playboy Afro. But these are fights Hammer's could be winning. At the end of that exchange, Best Chuck NA had no energy, and Bonsi had actually been forced to back away uh, because the turret was too much of a threat. But because Archaic backed so far away, and because starting all over took too much damage during the time where he was hit by a Fearsome Shade, when Playboy Afro had Crucible available, they weren't able to actually translate what could have been a turnaround into exactly that. If they just play these fights perfectly, I actually think they're starting to hit the point where they have a chance, but they're they're not close to playing the fights perfectly in the last couple. You know, they've had good things that they've done, 
but not comprehensively, right? Like, not everything they need to do. Here comes another fight, though. Well, this might be a little something, but wait for it. It's going to actually just silence them all off. They're all Dane trapping three members as well, starting all over. Oh, that's Gets big. the bounty used on him. He's still kiting back. Solar Storm only hits Flash X. Core Collapse as well is going to stun him up. Flash X might just go down. He does. Gauntlet isn't going to find anybody at all, but Archaic is going to go down. Now TSM on Double the chase. Kill. They're on the chase for the hunting down of starting all over. He ends up falling. Ace. That will be Archaic as well, going down for the ace. TSM are going to look to just finish this 